Shalom. First and foremost, I want to give all praise, all honor, all glory to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shah, Bahashem, Rakak Wadash. Double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone for teaching me this truth according to the Bible through the spirit and power of Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shah, and a sincere peace and salutation to, hope, to all you hopeful to let Akim out there pushing his word in all truth and sincerity, doing the work as Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shah has commanded you to do so he can wake up and seal the elect of the nation of Israel, which consists of you so called blacks. Hispanics and Native Americans, and you Israelites who are scattered amongst the heathen nations that may look like the heathen nations, but your father's seed line goes back to you being the so-called Black, Hispanic, and Native American, one of the twelve tribes of the children of Israel. Shalom. It's your brother Halakia from the GMS Denver camp coming back once again through the spirit and power of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah with another video. And then someone wanted to go into Wisdom of Solomon 3. And just go into a few of these verses, man, because at the at the end of the day. This is what's about to play out. The Most High is going to take care of his servants. The Most High is going to take care of his men. The Most High is going to take care of his true believers, man. You see? And everybody outside of this truth, they don't understand what we are, uh, what we have been going through, or what we will go through, or why we're going through it, man. But at the end of the day, man, we're comforted knowing and understanding what the will of the Most High is. You see? What's going to happen when it's all said and done? Because these people outside of the truth, they really think that this system, this current beast structure that's been established upon the planet Earth, they think this thing is going to continue on forevermore. But us in this truth, we know and understand that Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah is going to put an end to it. And since we're coming in the spirit of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah, we're about to catch complete hell. You see? But it's, it's not for us to get discouraged. It's for us to have good courage and continue to push forth and to push forth knowing and understanding that Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah has our back, man. So I want to go into Wisdom of Solomon 3 and 1 and uh, uh, 3. This is uh, a few of the verses. We're down to like 9. To show that the Most High has our back even, even in the time of us catching complete hell. You see? So this is Wisdom of Solomon 3 and 1. It says what? But the, but the souls of the righteous are in the hand of Yahweh, and there shall no torment touch them. You see that? We belong unto the Most High, man. We belong unto the Heavenly Father and His only begotten Son, so no torment will touch us. That, that doesn't mean that we're not going to go through things. You see? It, it just means that we're going to go through them, but we're not, we're, we're not going through it to be destroyed. See, like two-thirds of our people all the hell that the Most High is about to bring upon them is for their destruction. You see? All the hell that's about to be brought upon us is for what? It's for our betterment. It's to make us stronger in the spirit. It's to, it's to make us trust in the Heavenly Father and His only begotten Son even more. That's why we're about to go through what we're about to go through. You see? It's a difference. Verse 2 says what? In the sight of the unwise they seem to die. And their departure is taken for misery. You hear that? So in the sight, in the sight of those who have who don't have the wisdom of the understanding, we seem to die. And our departure is taken for misery. So you're gonna have brothers and sisters who might have to be martyrs for this truth. Who might have to stand ten toes down for Yahweh Bashim Yahushua, no matter what may come upon them, man. And, 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 and to the and to the unlearned, and to the uninitiated, man. They think we're just perishing, just gonna perish away. But that's not what it is, man. Verse 3 says what? And they're going from us to, uh, to be utter destruction, but they are in peace. And why are we at peace? Because we're comforted by the word of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah. We're comforted by the Holy Spirit to know and understand that this is not the end all be all, man. And that's some two thirds of our people. They don't understand. They don't understand that this is a life after this one, man. They don't understand that, that our kingdom is going to be established directly after this kingdom goes down. You see? So, so when they see us, see us going going through what we're going through, they th <laughs> they're gonna be thinking that they oh, are oh, oh man they fucking up. They, they should just bow the knee. They should just go along. They should just you know what I'm saying stop believing in what they believe in and just and just go go along with everybody else so they can survive. No man. No, we're gonna stand with Yahweh Shem Yahushua no matter what type of hell may come upon us, man. Because we're comforted in the spirit, man. We know we got greater things coming coming to us, as the Most High has told us all throughout this book, man. 
You see? Verse 4 says what? For though they be punished in the sight of men, yet is their hope full of immortality. You hear that? Though we be punished in the sight of men, though we be going through hell, though we, uh, hey, we're not finna bow the knee, we're not finna take that, that, that chip or that damn, that jab, so we're going to be outcast in society and everybody else who, and everybody outside of this truth who sees that, they think we're going to be punished, man. They think we're being punished. You see, they're going to they're gonna be going along to get along they, hey, so they can continue on in society. And we're going to be doing the complete opposite, man, because we have our hope in something else. We have our hope in Yahweh Bashim, Yahweh Shah. We have our hope in the promises the Most High has made to our forefathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, man. You see? So don't let these people try to deceive you into thinking that you're missing out on something, man. It's them who are losing. Those who bow the knee, they're the ones who are losing, man. Those who stand firm in Yahweh Bashim, Yahweh Shah, will have everlasting life, man. That's where our hope lies, you see? That's where our hope is. Verse 5 says what? And having been a little chastised, they shall be greatly rewarded. You hear that? So the things that these people are going to be, that that they're going to see us go through, you know, they're going to think it's such a, a big deal when it's really not, man. It's just a little chastisement for that greater reward that, that awaits us on the other side of this kingdom, man. You see? Like the Apostle Paul said, man. Real quick. I got two real quick. This is 2 Corinthians chapter 4. Verse 17 says what? For our light affliction. You hear that? Our light affliction, man. This, this is just a light affliction. You know Satan, his job is to magnify everything to make it seem it to, to make it seem bigger than what it really is, man. But when we step back and stay in the spirit, we know and understand according to what's written. You know, because the things that are written the time are written for our learning, right? So as it is written, what we're going through is a light affliction, which is but for a moment. It's not forever. It's not going to last forever, man. It's only for a moment. You see? It says what? For our light affliction, which is but for a moment, worketh for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. So the light affliction that we're going through, you see, is going to bring us to a more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. That look, this little chastisement that we're going through, being outcast out of society, not being able to uh, move about in society as freely as we're doing now. That's just a little affliction, man. It's only for a moment. It ain't going to last forever. And the Most High has given us that comfort by way of these scriptures, man, to, to allow us to know and understand that it's not going to be forever. Verse 8 says what? For while we look at the slot, for while we look not at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen, for the things which are seen are temporal, but the things which are not seen are eternal. You hear that? We don't look at the things that we can see, man. You see? We're looking beyond this place. That's the vision the Most High has blessed us to have, man. To know and understand that the kingdom is coming, that Yahweh Shah is coming, that Yahweh Shah is coming to establish everything in righteousness. And the system that we see set up on the earth is only but for a moment, man. So we're not looking for this place to continue on for another 10, 12, 15 years. Hell, we ain't looking forward to continue the next uh, for, for two more years, man. We're looking beyond this place, man. You see? Why is that? Because the things that we see are temporal. This is only temporary what we're going through. All the pain, the su suffering, the affliction. You see? The vexation, the annoyance that we go through on a daily basis is only for a moment, man. Only for a moment. It says what? But the things which are not seen are eternal. eternal and that's what we focus on. The things which are not seen, man. The Most High, Yahweh Shah, the Kingdom of Heaven, man. Being brought up under the Second Covenant. These are things that we look forward to. We look forward to the eternal, man. So what we're going through right now is the light affliction. This is Romans 8. In 18, it says what? For I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. So whatever we're going through right now, it don't compare to what the Most High is going to give us after we suffer what we have to suffer, man. It doesn't even compare. Do you understand that we're going to live forevermore? One day you're going to be one million years old. Do you, do you understand that? One day you're going to be one million years old. One day 
it's going to be the 500,000 Passover on the planet Earth. You see? That's the type of glow we're about to receive, man. Immortality, having the law, statutes, and commandments written in our minds, man. Never going off again. Having everything the Most High has promised unto us. Being blessed each and every day, 24-7. You see? Every day being blessed. Every second of the day being blessed, man. Deuteronomy 28, 1 through 14, all day, every day. You see? So what we're going through right now, it don't compare to what we're going to receive, man. To the glory that the Most High is going to bestow upon us. So this is just a light affliction and it's almost over. The people outside of this truth don't understand that. That's why they're going to bow the knee to Esau. That's why they're going to go along with this beast system, man. And guess what's going to happen to them? They're going to be destroyed. You see? So back in Wisdom of Solomon chapter 3, verse 5, it says what? And having chastised, it's like, and having been a little chastised, they shall be greatly rewarded. We just read 2 Corinthians uh, 4, Romans chapter 8, verse 18. It said the same thing over there, man. And having been a little chastised, they shall be greatly rewarded. For the most high proved them, for the most high Yahweh proved them and found them worthy for himself. So that's what we're going through, man. Babylon the Great has always been set up for the elect to wake up in the last days and to go through this proving ground. That's all Babylon the Great is, man. A proving ground. A testing site to see how great our faith is in Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah. That's why this place was set up. You see? Let's get this. Oh, no. Shit. Oh, yeah, yeah. The Wadi Habashim Yawashah. This is Isaiah 64. It says, having been, having been a little chastised, we shall be greatly rewarded, right? And, and Isaiah 64 and 4 tells us this, man. Whoo! <laughs> Isaiah 64 and 4 says what? For since the beginning of the world, men have not heard nor perceived by the ear neither have the eye seen O Yahweh beside thee what he hath prepared for him that waited for him what the Most High has prepared for them that stand ten toes down no matter what that suffer through all the affliction all the hell all the pain all the anguish all the torment that we're going to have to go through to get to the kingdom you see though no one has ever seen this type of reward given to anybody that's how great it's going to be. We can't even really comprehend what the kingdom of heaven is going to be. We can't really comprehend the glory that the Most High is about to give us. We can't really comprehend this reward of the kingdom of heaven, man. It can't be put into words. It, we, we, can't, we, can't even imagine, we can't even imagine it fully, man. Brothers be having, you know what I'm saying, little thoughts and things uh, about the kingdom of heaven. But guess what? It, it falls so short of what, it really, what, it's, what it's really going to be, man. That's how great the kingdom of heaven is going to be. And I still... I ain't doing it just as, even by using these words, man. I can't, you can't really put it into like perspective of what it really is, man. It's, it's going to be that great. <laughs> you see, that's the reward the most I is going to give us for standing firm, man. For standing bold. You see, for standing for what's right. And that's all we're doing, man. we standing for what's right. So, what are we doing wrong, man? We standing for the ways of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh to be established on the earth, man. That's all we're doing. And if we continue to endure to the end, like Yahweh Shah told us, man, we shall be saved. And that's what we're hoping to do. To receive that magnificent reward from the for, from Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah, man. So Wisdom of Solomon 3 and 5 says what? And having been a little chastised, they shall be greatly rewarded. The kingdom of heaven, man. Hey, begin, hey, beginning with that salvation, first and foremost, to escape this destruction that's coming to Babylon the Great. It says, what? For Yahweh proved them and found them worthy for himself. You see that? It says, what? As gold and the fire have he tried them and received them as a burnt offering. Put us to, through complete hell, man. Why? To be tried as gold in the fire. To get rid of all those impurities that we have in us, man. Because when it's all said and done, the only thing the remnant is going to be cleaving unto, <laughs> while all hell is breaking loose, is Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah, man. That's all we're going to be doing. That's how the Most High wants it. Putting our trust in nothing else except for Him and His only begotten Son. Purging all those impurities, all those bad habits that we picked up in Babylon the Great. The Most High is about to get rid of all that shit, man. 
But we must go through great affliction and hell to do that. When hell come, Yahweh Shemiah will shout deliver me. Baba Kasha. Everything we going through, we're going to be calling upon Yahweh Shemiah will That's what the Most High wants, man. Putting full trust, faith, and hope in him and Yahweh Shah. You see? That's what the Most High wants to see out of his remnant, man. You see? It says what? As gold have he tried them in the furnace. Slot. Wisdom of Solomon 3 and 6. As gold in the furnace have he tried them and received them as a burnt offering. This is what it must be, man. We are living sacrifices for Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah, man. Let's get this in Sirach. Two and two, if I'm mistaken. Nope. Nope. Yep. Sirach chapter two, verse five. It says, "What for gold is tried in the fire, and acceptable men in the furnace of adversity." You hear that? So that so to get gold to that completely pure state that it has to be at, to be worth anything, you have to try this gold in the fire, man, to burn all that dross, all those impurities up out of it. You see? When you see that finished product of that gold, it's, it's all shiny. You know what I'm saying? It looks all nice got a gleam to it you know what i'm saying that all comes from it being tried in that fire because once you dig that gold up out of that mountain wherever you get it from it's all dirty got all type of impurities in it but you have to burn it down you have to continue to do that until there is no more dross in it man and that's what we're going through right now shit that's what we've been going through ever since we came into the truth man that furnace of fire it says what an acceptable man in the furnace of adversity why is that because going through adversity is going is going to make us better man you see, as we grow in the faith, as we grow in the spirit, man, we continue to cleave unto the Most High and Yahweh Shah more, more and more each and every day. That's what the Most High wants, man. You see, because we picked up bad habits here in Babylon. Worshipping false idols. Believing in the so-called white man's doctrines and philosophies. The Most High is getting rid of that out of all of us, man. So that's why we go through the hell that we go through. So we can pray to the Most High more. So we can cleave to the Most High more. So we can read through these scriptures more. Pray and fast more. That's why we're doing, that's why we're going through all this, man. You see? So when it's all said and done, the only thing that we're going to be cleaving unto is the Heavenly Father and His only begotten Son. And that's what the Most High wants. Let's get to uh, Acts 14 and 22 because it tells you that's exactly, <laughs> this is exactly how we're going to get to where we want to be. Oh, I'm going to get Acts, uh, Second Edges chapter 7 too, if I can remember that. This is Acts chapter 14 verse 22. It says what? Confirming the souls of the disciples and exhorting them to continue in the faith and that we must through much tribulation enter into the kingdom of the Most High. And why is that? Because we have to be tried as gold in the fire. We have to be purified. So that's why we're going to go through. The, that's why we're going to get to the kingdom of heaven through much tribulation. Yeah, I wish I had to do the same thing, man. You see. He had to be tried and proven. He passed the test. And because we believe upon Yahweh Shah, we will pass the test as well if we are those men. And Lord willing, we are, man. You see? But this is the only way to get to the kingdom of heaven. Jacob's trouble is for us to go through it and be purged as, as, as gold in the fire. And for two-thirds, it's for them to be burned up and consumed, man. But this is the only way we're going into the kingdom. Don't let these other groups tell you, I ain't no tribulation coming, Jacob's trouble is gay. So we already know what's about to happen to them, man. They're about to be consumed by this furnace of adversity. You see? I want to get second edges. Seven and, uh, let's see. Yup, second edges, seven and six, it says what? There is another thing. A city is built and set upon a broad field. And it's full of all good things. The city that is built and set upon that broad field and full of all those good things is the kingdom of heaven, man. You see, I was talking to a brother earlier, man. I was like, man, you see, after the righteousness, you know what I'm saying? Because that's what we truly want first and foremost. And everything else falls into place after that. So after we're established in that, in that righteous state forevermore, the first thing I want to do is, 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 is drink some, some, some clean water, man. Some real water. Fresh water. You see? That might be a small thing to some people, but us in this truth, man, that's the thing that we're longing to do, you know? That's some that's some of those good things that's in the kingdom that's waiting for us. Fresh water, real food, clean air, you see? <sighs> you see? These are some of the things that await because everything on this side is polluted, man. 
Verse 7 says what? The entrance thereof is narrow and is set in a dangerous place to fall. Like as if like as if there were a fire on the right hand and on the left a deep water. You see? We're on that straight path, man. That narrow gate. Which only a few are allowed to walk down. You see? And there's dangers and perils on every side of it. It says what? Verse 8. And only one path between them both, even between the fire and the water, so small that there could but one man go there at once. Because we have to all work out our own, work out our own salvation with fear and trembling. Yeah, we're a body and we're in this together, but we all have our own personal walk. You see? We all have to walk this straight gate. You see, one by one. So it goes on to say, If this city now, verse 9, 2nd edge 7 and 9, If this city now were given unto a man for an inheritance, if he never shall pass the danger set before it, how shall he receive this inheritance? You see? So there is no way to receive the kingdom unless we go through these trials and tribulations, man. You see? This is the only way. Verse 18 says what? And and I said, it is so, Lord. Then said he unto me, even so is Israel's portion. You see, and this is what the remnant is going to have to go through to get into the kingdom of heaven, man. That's the initiation, man. This is the initiation. Being here, being here in this wicked-ass society. Wherever brothers may be in the earth, it's all wicked, wherever, wherever brothers are, you see, moving and maneuvering through the spirit and poverty, how about Shemiah Washan, and doing it to the end, man. This is the only, this is the only pathway to immortality. You, can, you can't go any other way to get it. You have to go through the affliction. You have to be tried as gold in the fire. You have to be a burnt sacrifice for, for you, how about Shemiah Washan, to get to the kingdom, man. There is no other way. So going back to Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 3. It says, uh, yep. Wisdom of Solomon 3 and 6. As gold is, as gold in the furnace have you tried them and received them as a burnt offering. And in the time of their visitation, they shall shine and run to and fro like sparks among the stubble. Because spiritual power is coming to the men of the Lord, man. This is something else we're looking forward to. This is something else we're going to receive if we continue to stand ten toes down and completely trust in Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah because the Most High has promised to do what? He's promised to lift up a standard, you see, for those that believe in Him, man. He's promised to defend us from the hands of the enemy, man. You see? Let's get that real quick. Isaiah 59 and 19 says what? So shall they fear the name of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah from the west and His glory from the rising of the sun. When the enemy shall come in like a flood, the, the spirit of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah shall lift up a standard against him. You see, so when these people come up against us for believing in what we believe in, for standing for righteousness, for standing in Yah for standing in great boldness from Yah uh, for Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah, the Most High is going to lift up a standard for us to protect us, man. He's going to pour his spirit spirit heavily upon us. Whether that be what by giving brothers spiritual powers, by having the angels that are, that are surrounding us right now manifesting the physical to defend us. Whatever it may be, man. The Most High is going to defend his remnant, man. You see? Going back. Verse 8 says what? They shall judge the nations. You see? They shall judge the nations and have dominion over the people and their Lord shall reign forever. And that's what it's going to be, man. This is the end game, man. This is the end goal of Yahweh Shem Yahweh Shah. For Yahweh Shah the 144,000 and the rest of the nation of Israel to rule on the planet earth forevermore. That's what the Most High's will is, man. He's going to put his people back on top where he always wanted them to be at. And we're going to govern the earth by way of the righteous ways, the righteous laws, statutes, and commandments of the Heavenly Father, Yahweh. This is what's coming. I'm bringing this out a lot. Daniel 7. <laughs> Daniel 7 and 13. It says what? And I saw in the night visions, and behold, one like the Son of Man came with the clouds of heaven, and came to the Ancient of Days, and they brought him near before him. This is talking about Yahweh Shah being brought back to the Heavenly Father after he was crucified upon that cross, man. And what did the Most High do when Yahweh Shah was brought before him? Verse 14 says what? And there was given him dominion and glory and a kingdom, that all people, nations, and languages should serve him. You see that? 
This is what's being promised to you, how it shot, and it will come to pass because the most high doesn't lie. Anything the most high spoke is going to happen. So this kingdom that Yahweh Shah has promised, he is going to receive it. It says what? His his domain is an everlasting domain which shall not pass away. And his kingdom that which shall not be destroyed. You hear that? That's what's about to be established upon the planet Earth. This is how the, the people of the Lord and it's like, this is how Yahweh Shah and the 144,000 are going to judge the nations, man. Because all domain and power is going to be given unto Yahweh Shah. And, and it, like Romans 8 tells you, if we suffer with Yahweh Shah, we, we will be made co-heirs with him in the kingdom of heaven. Meaning what? That we're going to inherit the heathen nations as well, man. To rule over you with the rod of iron, just as the Most High promised unto his son, Yahweh Shah. This is what's coming, man. This is the will of the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, and nothing will stop it, man. And if you want to demonize us and call us crazy for believing in this, hey, to hell with it, man. We're going to continue to stand in this because we put our trust in the word of Yahweh Shem Yahweh above all else, man. We put our word, we put our trust in the Heavenly Father and his, and his only begotten Son above all else, knowing and understanding that you people have no fucking power, man. That you have no say-so. You didn't, you didn't create nothing upon this planet Earth, man. You yourself is a creation. You see? And the Most High is about to show you people that you are nothing unto him, man. You see? And, and he's going to show you that what we're doing is the right thing, man. Let's get another one. Let's get Daniel chapter 2. Let me see. It's all the way down here. I think it's like 44 to start at. Yup. <clears throat> nope, I'm tripping. I'm tripping. It was that. It was Daniel seven. So lock it. But that was a good one too, though. It says, uh, I think it's down to eighteen. Yup. Daniel seven and uh seven. Ah shit. Daniel seven and seventeen says what? These great beasts, which are four, are four kings, which shall rise out of the earth. These these four beasts was talking about four different heathen nations, man. A heathen rulership, and we're in that. Revised fourth beef right now, man. The revised Roman Empire, which is being brought to desolation right now before our eyes. And what's going to happen? Verse 18 says, What? But the saints of the Most High, which are the Israelites, shall take the kingdom, which is the planet Earth, and possess the kingdom forever, even forever and ever. And that's what it's going to be, man. You see? This is what was this is what it's going to be. And this is how we're going to be able to what? What does it say? Wisdom of Solomon 3 and 8, they shall judge the nations and have domain over the people, and their Lord shall reign forever. Why? Because the Most High is about to give the kingdom of heaven, which is the planet Earth. The, hey, he's about to give it unto the Israelite, to Yahweh Shah and, and the rest of the Israelites, man. And we are going to reign forever on the planet Earth. This is what's coming. You see? Verse 9 says what? They that put their trust in him shall understand the truth, and such as be faithful in love shall abide with him. For grace and mercy is to his saints, which are the Israelites, beginning with the remnant, and he have care for his elect. And who is the elect, man? Those that have been preordained to be fashioned after the image of the only, the only begotten son, man, Yahweh Shah. You see? To walk as Yahweh Shah walked when he was upon the planet Earth, doing what? Doing the will of the Most High, man. The Most High has care, care for his elect, and Lord willing we be a part of that number. We're going to be taken care of, man. Even when we're going through these crazy situations that the Most High is about to put us through, man. It's all a test. It's all a trial of faith, man. And Yahweh Bashem Yahshua willing, we will endure. Verse 10 says what? But the ungodly shall be punished. Look, listen to this. So we just got, you know, we're going to go through hell. We're going to be protected. We're going to be taken care of, you see, because we are the Most High's elect, Lord willing. And everybody outside of this truth, what's going to happen to them? Verse 10 says what? But the godly shall be unpunished according to their own imaginations, who have neglected the righteous and forsaken Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shah. And that's what's going to come upon everyone outside of this truth, man. Complete death and destruction. You see? For all those who don't believe in Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shah, man. For all those who are walking in that rebellious spirit. You see? You're going to be destroyed right along with Babylon the Great, while the elect of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shah. Is going to be taken care of and receive that salvation as it is written. You see? So with that, man, I'm going to give all praise, all honor, all glory to 
Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shah, Bahashem, Rekakwadash. Double honors to the apostles and elders of the Great Millstone for teaching me this truth according to the Bible through the spirit and power of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shah and sincere peace and salutation to all you hopeful let Akim out there pushing his word in all truth and sincerity doing the work as Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shah has commanded you to do. With that, I'm going to say Shalom, Wa, Abba, Abba.